Right. Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Countryside Rights of Way panel meeting, uh, 18th on the uh, 10th of March. 11th of March, even. Time marches on, literally. Could we start, please? Uh, first of all, before we, we, we do actually start the meeting, just to inform anyone who's here uh, and members of the public, uh, this is uh, a, a public um, meeting. It has been, is, it is being uh, broadcast onto the web and will be there um, for the next 12 months uh, for anyone who's interested to uh, see what's happened at this meeting. <coughs> And we'll start, please, with apologies. Good morning, Chairman. I'm not in receipt of any apologies for this morning's meeting. Could, could, could I therefore register Jill Waring's put her apologies in? Thank you. And we'll move on to item number two. Uh, and this item is, are there any declaration of interest from members regarding this? No. Okay, thank you. And uh, item number three, uh, we've got here the minutes for the 18th of February. Can I take them as a true and correct? Moved by um, Councillor Snape, seconded by Jack Abrams. Thank you. Um, and I'll sign those in a second. We'll move on, please, to uh, the main item, uh, which is uh, item number four on the agenda. And it's the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981, public footpath from bridal, public bridleway 25 to public bridleway 13 in Colwich Parish. Uh, now, I understand that, st uh, Steph, welcome, Steph. Are you going to take this one? Chair, I am, yes, sir. Thank you. Right. Uh, good morning, Chair, members. This is an application for the addition of a public footpath between two current public bridleways, namely Public Bridleway 25 and Public Bridleway 13 in Colwich Parish, being on the edge of Cannock Chase, approximately halfway between Stafford and Rugeley. The application route is marked A to B at Appendix B and was submitted by Mr Martin Ray. In support of the application, Mr Ray listed and submitted an extract from the Stafford to Rugby Deposited Railway Plan, together with an extract from its book of reference. He also attached a two-inch ordnance survey sheet showing the route of application. In addition to these documents, Mr Ray provided further documentation for our consideration, which included additional ordnance survey maps, a traced copy of the tithe map of 1845, a copy of the online map and some typed up notes from Staffordshire Record Office. This further documentation is all within the appendices of the report, but it is your officer's opinion that the additional information that is within the appendices do not support the application. The Staffordshire Railway Plan extract comprises two survey drawings and a book of reference. These drawings are taken from a survey of the complete route of the Staffordshire Railway Railway, Staffordshire Rugby Railway which is approximately 50 miles in length. Every mile had to be geographically surveyed and the landowners over which the intended route was to pass had to be established. These landowners are listed in the book of reference. All of this information would be encompassed within the draft act, which would be placed before parliament and consisted of many hundreds of pages, which is why only the extracts can be taken. In this particular claim, there are two plans, one of which is on a larger scale than the second plan. Both of these plans show the claimed route. The larger scale plan has the route marked Common Lane and Footway to Brockton, and the smaller scale plan has the route marked Footway to Brockton. In both plans, the claimed route is shown to commence in a southerly direction leading off the highway with regard to the orientation of the plan, which is the A513, suggesting a route directly to the south around Beggars Hill. The village of Brockton is in a westerly direction of this footpath. Although within these documents the illustrations are labelled as having a route to Brockton, there is no evidence by way of documentation as to the exact location of this route on the ground to support this. The applicant also contends that the route can be seen on the two-inch ordnance survey map, which is shown at Appendix D. 
Although your officers consider that it is feasible that there may be something of a physical marking on the map, the nature of the plan provides little legal weight. Your officers discovered the Bow Desert map, which can be seen at Appendix I. For context, Bow Desert, which means beautiful wilderness, was an estate and stately home on the southern edge of Cannock Chase in Staffordshire, which had been given to the Paget family by Henry VIII following the dissolution of the monasteries. The plan was drawn up in the early 1820s. However, as mentioned within the report, the plan did not provide any further corroborating evidence for the claimed footpath. Whilst there appears to be a route around Beggars Hill, it appears not to link with the footpath heading in the direction of Rockton. Furthermore, it is very likely that this plan would be for the estate's benefit and not for public use. An estate plan is a subjective depiction of what the owner wanted to portray and therefore adds little weight to the claimed footpath. A report was sent for initial consultation in August 2021 to the applicant, Colwish Parish and Stafford Borough Council for their comments, although no responses were received. The freehold title of the claimed path is within Staffordshire County Council's ownership. A copy of the report was also sent to Mr Peter Till, who we understood to have a presumed interest in the land. Mr Till submitted a response in October 2021 through his solicitor Marcia Grice at Burkitt's. This can be found at Appendix J. Although the claimed path does not cross Mr Till's land, he was concerned about this claim for a further footpath because he has a shooting school on his land which is adjacent to this claimed footpath and would further the risk of accident. If, however, an order was to be made, then the onus is on the landowner to ensure that the site is safe for walkers. Your officers further reflected upon the evidence that had been supplied by the applicant, together with that discovered by the County Council, and also on consideration of Mr Till's evidence. It was considered that the initial recommendation within the report, which was to accept that the claim right-of-way existed, was based upon an inexperienced evaluation of the evidence. The report was considered and redrafted with a revised recommendation that there was insufficient evidence for the claimed footpath and therefore that the claimed route should not be added to the definitive map and statement. In January 2022, the revised report was once again sent to the relevant parties for comments. Mr Till's representatives once again provided additional comments regarding the claimed route and these can be found on the addendum to the report. These comments did not, however, have any impact on the findings and recommendation of the report. There was no response from the applicant, Colwish Parish or Stafford Borough Council. With this application, there are two separate legal tests, one of which must be satisfied before a modification order can be made. The first test is whether the evidence on the balance of probabilities shows the right-of-way subsists. The second test is whether the evidence shows that a public right-of-way can be reasonably alleged to subsist. On consideration of the limited amount of evidence and the fact that the whole of the route cannot be established on any of the evidence, it is your officer's opinion that the application cannot pass the test on either the balance of probabilities or that the way can be reasonably alleged to subsist. And it is with this in mind that your officer's recommendation that the claimed public right-of-way with the status of footpath does not subsist. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you uh, for uh, a very com comprehensive and uh, uh, complete report. Uh, it's, uh, there's two tests, neither have been passed. Um, any comments from members? Paul. The first one is a question. Has John Francis, the local member, responded at all? Uh, Chair, uh, sorry, member, not to my knowledge, no. Thank you. And the second really is just to go on what uh, the Chairman says. Uh, balance of probabilities, reasonable belief, they're the lower test of a scale. It's not even reached the lower test of a scale uh, to say that the footpath exists. The evidence just doesn't appear to be there. So uh, uh, I, I won't be supporting, I will be going with officer's recommendation. Is, is that a proposition? If you want me to, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Jack, would you like to say anything? Thank you, so, use your microphone, please. I agree with the previous members. So we've got a proposition to accept the uh, officer's um, recommendation of, of refusal on this. Uh, we've got a, a proposer and a seconder. 
Can we all show hands? Those again to follow the officer's recommendation. Okay, so, so this uh, uh, application for adding to the definitive map has been refused. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Members. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Right, and we'll move now on to um, item number five, which is exclusion of the public. And uh, I've got to read out this note here. Uh, that the chairman, that the public be excluded from the meeting for the following items of business, which involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in the paragraphs of part one of schedule 12A as amended of the Local Government Act 1972 indicated below. Okay, so 